So, talked a little bit about fisheries independent science. Now let's talk about some fisheries dependent science. MRIP. MRIP is what's causing problems in our gag grouper fisheries. So this one's a little bit more important. So this is the marine uh, fisheries. Uh, this one's Marine Recreational Information Program, MRIP. Basically, it's a little bit of a uh, complicated process on how they uh, get recreational catch and how they can get to what recreational catch is. So it's a state, regional, and federal partnership that develops, improves, and implements a national network of recreational fishing surveys to estimate total recreational catch. So it's a very complicated process, and you can see some of the data collection programs across the regions. There are a lot of them, and they have to all work together. So that's a very heavy, uh, data-rich page explaining some of the crazy surveys, uh, crazy number of surveys across the, the United States and Southeast region. Uh, data collection programs are definitely um, vast and a little bit changing through the regions. Keep in mind, MRIP, the Marine Recreational Information Program, is nationwide. So these numbers, a lot of people are like, where do they come up with these numbers? How are they doing this? The Gulf Council sucks. The Gulf Council has nothing to do with these numbers. A lot of the Gulf Council folks are just as angry, if not more angry, than you, are, you and I are about these gag grouper numbers. These numbers are coming from MRIP. Coming from Washington D.C., these are not. This is a national program. NOAA's Office of Science and Science and Technology, NOAA OST, is where MREP is housed and where this information and the numbers are coming from. So, recreational catch information, MREP, is added to the commercial catch information, is added to the biological information from the fisheries independent science, and is added to direct observations of fish stocks. All that information is then added together to stock assessments. Stock assessments then precipitate management actions. So this is how you get recreational information is through MREP. So it's an estimate range. They have a lower limit and an upper limit of that estimate range. And there's the point estimate. So they try to give you a best estimate is basically the way they do it. So they go into interpreting, interpreting an estimate. So they publish the precision of each estimate as an indicator of its quality. So the higher percent standard error or PSE, the more variation in the data. So the higher the percent standard error or PSE, the more variation in survey data. So higher PSE means a greater variation in survey data. So let's go back over to the GAG grouper presentation because I want to show you something real quick. So higher PSE means greater variation in survey data. So let's pop back over to this slide and show you guys. For GAG groupers, what was the PSE numbers? So the shore-based PSE or percent standard area, error 98%. It does not get any higher. So there's a 42% chance that this is an error as well. <laughs> there's a 98% chance that these numbers are an error. Little, little, uh, little unacceptable for PSE numbers in my mind to manage our fishery with. So just wanted to connect those dots back again. <laughs> All right, so let's get back into MREP here and show you guys a little bit more about this. So uh, from a sample to an estimate. So basically they talk to anglers, state field interviewers, state marine resource agencies, regional fishery information networks, Gulf States Fisheries, uh, NOAA Fisheries, regional fisheries office and science centers. They all work together to get all that information out to customers and stakeholders. So there is a common potential source of error in MREP, small sample sizes, large variation, large variation in observations or extreme observations. So if they talk to one person and they said, well, I caught a billion grouper today, or they talk to someone and says, hey, I caught no grouper today. There's a large variation there. If a 42-foot Freeman comes to the boat ramp with six people on it that went 120 miles today, they could have some really big gag grouper, and they could have a lot of them. If the next boat that pulls up is a 17-foot skiff, 
that went out fishing at the Skyway, they didn't have very many gag grouper. That's a large variation. And it's a very small sample size. There's only two people. So that can really skew the information. So continuous survey improvement process, that is the good news here, is they are really spending a lot of time, energy, and money, and tax dollars to try to improve the process. One of the biggest improvements to the process that they're doing now is trying to increase the number of samples and the surveys that are done, which will severely help because 32 intercepts is way too few. So as they continue to spend time and money to improve MREP FES, the better the data output will be. More data input is going to improve data output. They have to calibrate some of the surveys and some of the information, which means they take an estimate that they estimated and then calibrate it to another estimate. <laughs> so it gets really confusing and they have to calibrate uh, surveys because we have different uh, different surveys giving different information. So you have MREP FES in the Gulf, you have all the state surveys, you have the Gulf state surveys, you have all these different people collecting data, and they all have to be the same the same denomination, right? If you go to Canada, they have a different dollar than we do. You can't just use U.S. dollars. It's not a one-to-one -one transfer, right? The, 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 the currency exchange, there's a calibration there. And the same thing happens in these surveys. They have all these surveys collecting all this data collection, so they have to calibrate all those surveys back to MREP numbers. So they take all these good surveys, and then they calibrate them to MREP, which we have a lot of questions about, right? So it's very, very complicated. So just some of the challenges come into place with the, the, the competing needs of multiple stock assessments in multiple different regions, uh, compatibility and comparability across different data collection programs like the state surveys and tra transitioning to newer surveys. They're constantly trying to improve MREP, which creates more of a challenge because as they improve it, they have to change things. And as they continue to change things, it can create a bigger uh, possibility for more unknown problems or a higher PSC or percent standard error. So they are currently working on a pilot study to hopefully improve MREP sig significantly, and that should be done and completed by like 2026. So nothing happens fast in the federal government. So they are doing a lot of research. They are spending a lot of time, energy, and money, but we're stuck in this problem right now. And we're staring down the barrel of a huge problem with MREP causing an overage in our gag grouper fishery to the tune of like five times, which is a lot of overage and can create a lot of challenges for us. So hopefully we're going to come up with some good answers at this Gulf Council meeting to help us kind of through this gag grouper problem. All right, let's get into our next thing here real quick, and then we'll do another giveaway. All right, so we talked about MREP. Uh, we're going to rip through the next couple ones of these so we can get going a little bit faster because it's taking a little longer than I thought it would, but a lot of good information. And, again, hopefully you guys are in there, uh, uh, inter in entertained and enjoying this. I hear you, Josh, and I agree.